going into the school, just like the military do. Get the same tactic. No, we doing that. Get the same tactic. <clears throat> you know so, so, and they're going to be scared. It's crazy that you say that because we do Clippers and Cops Campus Invasion where we actually go into the school I and I have open dialogue with it. the kids. Yes, yes sir. Right here. Let me, let me, um, let me, let me. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. This is one of our students from earlier. And the whole goal is we ain't trying to recruit, but we trying to show them a different yeah. I look on police. When we walk in, of course, a lot of them is like, I don't mess with 12, this, that, and the other. But by the time they get to see us in a different light, it's a whole different perspective because some of them have never sat down and had the conversation with law enforcement. Yeah. It's just like anything. Representation matters. Yeah. And that's why we do this because a lot of some people have questions, comments, concerns. They don't have an opportunity to talk to the police. They don't know the police in their neighborhood. Yeah. We try to give pointers on how to get to know your police. Yeah, and right. our northern yeah, suburbs, they get to know the police. Why we don't do it in the south? I think it's got to become, I'm going to see right next. I think it's got to become a point to where you can't tell the people from the police. When those conversations get a little bit easier, those interactions become a little more natural. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all pointing to everybody else and I'm not the police. So, but I'm with them today. I'm doing this. So now it seems like, okay, they just regular. You know, crap stuff. So, so you said, what? what do to take back, right? So y'all are going to the schools, but in, in APS, in their schools, they have a class. It's a career pathway class, a law and public safety class, a pathway class. Police officers got to get involved in that class. You got to get involved in that class. These students are learning how to be police officers. They're learning about the courts. They're learning about the criminal justice system. And they, and they need the real police. I don't know who's teaching at APS, but they need the real police to come into those classes and teach them. And, and that's where you recruit from. And we're waiting to get that call um, right. from you, APS. Yeah, you may not get that call. Right. You may have to reach out to them. Because, so, because I'm, I'm going to tell you this, yeah. some of the teachers are just going to do the minimum. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, so, and so that's extra. And so you may have to reach out to them. I'm telling you. That you got you got to you got to hook up or somebody we can call because I mean we're definitely honestly, that your, it's funny that, that you say that we go it. anywhere we done been to the we done been to schools we done been to prisons we done been to churches we go wherever we are not afraid of, how can we be afraid of our people as police officers the, our job is to serve and to protect so if we supposed to be for the people why aren't we interacting with the people that's why we doing stuff like this and we welcome the opportunity we we went to the when we go to the schools we've been to the colleges a lot of times we can within two hours we can change a whole classroom's outlook through communication and dialogue because we're able to provide our stories our own backgrounds on how the first thing they ask how, what made you want to be the police and then you able to tell them and then they like, I ain't never thought about it like that. I thought you got bullied and beat up and was picked on in school. No. Right, but I'm saying this is a target environment. No. This, these, are, these are students that are in, a, in that pathway class. So when you go to Creekside, just say, hey, listen, where your law and public safety class at? That's what they're doing. Have y'all ever heard of it? Right. So, so. That deep voice right there, he go to Creekside. This boy going to be a, a voiceover star, man. He sound like <laughs> That's but that's what we basically asked him to come tonight because the first time we heard him speak, he he needs to be doing Lion King or something. Like, <laughs> like his voice is crazy and he don't even know. Like he's just a regular kid and we like, bro, you can be doing his voiceover and helping them think outside the box. Everybody can't go to the league. Everybody can't be a rapper. Like, there's other lanes of ways to make money legally. And that's all we try to help them with. What made you want to come out tonight? Basically. Uh, well, it's Speak up a little bit. Speak up a little bit. But like, you know, the fact that they, you know, came out of their way from the far realm just to come talk to us, show that they care. And honestly, that's a role model right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 
baby Clark. Yeah. Appreciate it, my boy. Yeah, man, that's real. Um, so to, to get that moving, then anybody online is watching right now and anybody in the room, if you have a, a, a pathway to any school, any school system, make sure that we get that information at the end of the event so we can make that connection with these different schools. I know Keith got about 50 of them. So we're going to make, so make sure we have those positive interactions. Like he said, he never saw it until that day, you know. And that's, that's unfortunate, really, but it's, it's the reality of it. So we got we to try to get those communications a little bit better. Anybody else? All right. I have a question. Okay. Uh, so what do police officers think about another officer turning a blind eye to police brutality? You just you don't. don't. He's just as bad as the officer doing the police brutality. And then in this day and age, for well, Atlanta Police Department, if your body cam, if his body cam come on, my body cam come on. It ain't no blind eye. You you forced to, and you can be charged if you fail not to get involved. So it's one of those things where policing as a whole is changing. Uh, some officers maybe feel like that ain't my problem, but if you see me allowing him to mistreat you, then you look at me as like, like I'm just as bad as he or even if I did it or did Right, so basically we're, we're not, with us, you're not going to get the blow the smoke up your ass patch times. <laughs> you're not going to act like you don't see it because there is some validity to your question. We understand why you asked it. But here in the city of Atlanta, there's a lot of accountability. You know, other places around the world, there might be a thin blue line that, you know, they're protected from the top all the way to the, to the officer level. But that's not here. You know what I'm saying? All we can speak on is what we would tolerate, and we're not going to tolerate that. You know, and most officers that police around us, I mean, they'll, they'll take their time and fill you out. So if you're down with what they're doing, they'll know that by the time they actually do that. But if they know you're an upstanding officer, they're not going to try that BS around you. And that's basically what it boils down to. They move in clicks for a reason. If they're comfortable doing stuff like that, then they're going to only do it around the people that they're comfortable doing it around. What about the de-escalation of the situation, though? You know, some cop, they pull up on the scene, and they're real aggressive. They're talking crazy. They're angry. They may have a rough day. You know, so how do y'all feel about the de-escalation of a police officer coming on the scene with a good attitude? Well, I mean... Okay, so let's talk about that. So we, we talk about stuff like that um, when we talk about traffic stuff, right? So I was just talking to these kids earlier about the number one goal. When you on a traffic stop or any encounter with the police, the number one goal for us and the number one goal for every citizen should be to make it back home to your family, okay? We all know, we see it every day, that the inability to de-escalate is causing a lot of us to be killed in these streets, right? Every argument that we have does not have to turn into a life or death situation. So when we see, just like we want it from the officer, ask it of ourselves too. We all can do better. We understand we are human. We all bring stuff from home. We're not robots. We bring stuff from home just like y'all do. We are trained. Y'all might not be as trained as us, but we understand everybody needs to bring it down a notch. That's the only way we're going to get better. Survive the encounter. Learn something from the encounter. If it comes to a situation where you get a ticket and or arrested, your court date is not in that moment. If that officer did you wrong, your court date is not in that moment. You probably got defense attorneys and everything else in here. They'll tell you if that officer messed up, there's going to be a time where we're going to show him up. Like we said earlier, when when watching sports, usually the only time a call gets reversed is through what? Instant replay. So on the scene, you ain't going to get that overturned. In reference to your question, though, you hope that another officer is able to de-escalate another officer. And try, hey, bro, calm down. Or, I got it or whatever. But sometimes everybody ain't as both. It's just like everybody ain't a tame barber. You know what I'm saying? Some people have better interpersonal skills than others. 
Some people can say, calm down. Like, hey, bro, watch out, dog. And that can de-escalate the situation. That's why we try to do this. Like, doing Clippers and Cops, we're not just doing this for the citizens. We're doing this for some of the officers so that they can learn techniques and different things to how to survive this, exactly what he's saying, how to talk to people, how to... As a police officer, you might have, some, most people have one interaction with a police officer. Most of the stuff that they hear about, they heard from somebody else. So if you leave a negative taste in somebody's mouth, guess what? That's going to forever for, affect that person and whoever they come in contact. Because now they're like, oh, I can't stand the police. And then you be like, what happened? Oh, man, a long time ago, this, that, and the other. And so you try to leave a, a different flavor for people. That's why we trying to start talking to the kid. Like he said, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? We trying to talk to them early where to let them know you don't have to be afraid on a, a traffic stop. And we ask the kids, when you get pulled over, what you supposed to do? What do you think they say first? Run. Run. <laughs> yep, that's what you running for? You escalate. That is escalating a chance of you getting hurt, me breaking my ankle, or I'm getting hurt. And so the whole thing is, if it's for a bag of weed, is that worth your life? No. Sit there. Answer the question. You ain't got to, for me, you ain't even got to yes, sir. And all I ask is give me the respect that you want me to give you. But a lot of but you know people, what? the only example they got is social media. So that they is watch correct. videos of the cops killing kids because they tell like that. Or like, it'd be a situation where they be like, stop resisting, stop resisting. You got your knee on my neck. I'm trying to breathe. Right. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes situations that you see all day on social media as a child, you gonna run into it. It's trauma. Yeah, that's social that's trauma. trauma. We see it is all day, every day. But I think not. that's what we all gotta have our social responsibility because I'm sure every, each and every one of these people in the room has a social network, right? So sure. share stuff like this. Now it don't have to be this video, although we would appreciate it. Please follow us um, at Clips and Cop <laughs> Amen. But also to share these types of interactions with us. Like they post a lot of stuff when we in the school, we got the kids dancing, we having fun, and it's they're not sharing that though. I know. know. They're so, sharing the toxic. But well, we can only control what we can control. <laughs> no, you can only control what else looking, right? You yeah, can't do whatever he's doing. That's on him. But for that's each cool. of us, we have to share those positive interactions. And hopefully, it starts to change the narrative. And, and when I ask these questions, I'm not talking about anybody in the room specifically. We don't need to be But in general, but this is not in general. I don't want y'all to feel like I'm attacking y'all. Nah, that's, 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 that's why we're here. We but, don't escalate them. Just, 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 just to say, even if you were, which you're not, but even if you were, this is what it's for. It's for open forum so we can have, have voices heard. Hey, uh, let, let me just, let me let me follow up. No, no, no. Oh, okay. With, with, uh, out the shadows. Yeah, yeah. With what you were saying. So uh, I'm going to play the devil's advocate for, for the people. For the other side. I mean, shit, we are worst enemies sometimes, the police. Right? So, and, and we've heard this as long as we've been doing this, where well, it seems like a real long time. But in the short time, we hear where the people in the community, when we go to these, they say, well, why is it always got to be on us? Right? And we get it. We understand it. Um, there's de escalation um, training yearly on our department. Um, let me just take that part first. It's no different. We, we send guys through training uh, when they first come on, five months maybe, five and a half months. Mm -hmm. To me, no different than when you raise your kid, right? You, you raise them a certain way, but when they go out in the world and start doing something different, you're like, shit. You know, they, people try to figure out, well, that kid came from a good home. He got good parents and this and that. Well, our department is like that, but once they get out there, it's not the training necessarily, uh, you know, the training that's bad. Hell, they decided to do, on, you know, do whatever on their own, all right? So that's the first thing. So the other thing that there, there is a, a policy now, all right, uh, a duty to intervene, all right, for us. So now even if a cop is doing something illegal, all right, let's just say, you know, any type of use of force, uh, or excessive use of force, then if that officer or officers are standing around there and they're not getting involved or doing anything, they're going to face the same consequences, if not worse. All right? You're going to get fired. All right? That, that's in the books now. 
Um, and I think that came as a result of all of the, the, the protesting back in 20. All right, it's, it, it's part of our policy now, all right? So guys understand that, but again, all right? When Ty was talking about, you know, some guys may feel hesitant in, 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 in getting involved, but shit, you better think about the big picture, and that's what we try to tell cops, you know, especially the young guys. Uh, you, you better do something, all right, to the contrary, and get involved and stop what's going on uh, and not worry about, well, I'm going to be, disliked or treated differently now that I stopped you from whipping somebody's ass uh, excessively, all right, when you had no business doing it in the first place. Um, so, again, with, with a lot of stuff, you see on TV, every all these different protests that have been going on, cops going to jail now, all right, getting convicted now, we still have stuff happening, right? Mm -hmm. So why is that? You would think, like, damn, don't you see what's been going on and what's been happening? So that's why I say we're our worst enemies. It's like we take one step forward and then about five or ten back. All right. So for us on the on the Atlanta Police Department, we have um, things in place. But once they go out, man, you just hope that they follow through with what they've been taught. It doesn't always happen like that. And it's not just Atlanta. That's probably every police department. All right, that's, a, that's a round, so. Thank you. That brings us to our next topic. Well, question. question. Yeah. Just a quick question. Um, like, when you brought that up, as far as like, when, when you all have like, routine stops, um, I know like, under the industry they have, like, metrics and stuff like that for, for, like, rating, or you think about customer service, they'll tell you, like, you know, if you're calling, it's going to be recorded for some type of review. Mm -hmm. You are do you any of that type of stuff, like, review, like an audit of reports or, like, hold any type of metrics for, like, their officers, too. So, like, I know you have the initial training, but as far as the continued training, like, you have to obtain, like, this, this certain type of score, you know, at least to just, like, the assess the officers. I know situations, they're all different. You can't control situations, but you can at least control, you know, like, the, the assessment or the ability of where you're, like, the officers. Mm -hmm. so, so, for us, what we do uh, in Atlanta is, I won't necessarily, there's no number uh, metrics or anything like that, but we do conduct uh, body cam audits right. of the officer's body cams. Random. Um, and this is weekly. Uh, you just randomly select, you know, not, if he doesn't work for me, I'm not doing him. I'm doing people up under my command, right? And I'm just picking... These, these guys, every you know, this week, the next week I'm going to pick different guys. I'm going to look at their body cam to see how are they handling their calls. All right. Are there some issues? Uh, and that's real good, especially if you start getting complaints on officers. And, uh, you know, the body cam to me, I mean, it, it's been a game changer um, uh, for all the law enforcement. Because uh, on one side, it's going to help the officer. And on the other side, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put your ass in a sling. Let me jump in right, right quick. We also talked about this earlier, where if you feel that an officer violated you, don't just sit on it. Man, I should go complain on them. Because then it's just like letting the pedophile victimize again. If it's somebody's a problem, they're a problem. And then usually what happens is, as they do multiple things or something else, then they finally do something big and then everybody come out the woodwork when it could have possibly been prevented. So quick question. So if you have a negative situation with an officer, like what steps do you take? Who do you call? Who do you ask for? Michael Carter. No, 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 there's really a process that you go through it. First of all, if you want something, you, you request for a supervisor. That's the that's the first, first phase of it. Request for the supervisor. And then, you know, if you feel like you, I just say you just go to the next step and you do get locked up. And you feel like that you wasn't uh, justified in that. There's, you know, there's a citizen review board that the city of Atlanta has that you can contact the citizen review board. The citizen review board would take on the time frame to look at that. Not only will they look at it, 
it will, depending on what, it can go to the zone or it can go to internal affairs, depending on how severe the situation is. So, but what we tell everybody, if you feel like that something is going on, you need to make that complaint. Make that complaint. Now, just say this here. After you make that complaint, and it maybe falls on deaf ears and goes, somebody else make a complaint. Then somebody else make a complaint. Then when it gets to a severity of it, when a situation happens, just like George Floyd, they looked at his record, and they went back and checked all the other complaints. And now some of those might end up, you know, getting let out because of that severity of the situation that took place. Hey, to say a loss of life led to that, but we got to do better. And we got to do better as law enforcement officers. And that's why we, you know, like we said, there's an integrity that we got to check on our officers as well inside of that. And most of the time, we talk about this all the time. The officers who are doing the dirt, they ain't going to do it around certain people. It's just like people going to do stuff, they're not going to do it just like you. You're going to do something, you're not going to do it around your mom. You're going to go on the side, do it where she can't see and stuff like that. They're not going to do it in front of you. But they will do it with somebody who clicks with them or who are in their game or who in who's going to roll with them. So, yes, there is a problem, and we have it. And some, like we said, there's a citizen review board here in Atlanta that you can go to. You have internal affairs and things of that nature. But I, and you can reach out to a supervisor, which is one right here. There's a supervisor right there. Go ahead, supervisor. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, hold that for a second. For one second. Mm -hmm. Let me just, because I, I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I will lose my train of thought. <laughs> no, no. Uh, on the question of the uh, the complaint, the, the process. So one of the good things that I think that the city has done uh, with the uh, Civilian Review Board, so there's a process, there's an arbitration process that's, that's put in there as well. So let's just say if you're a citizen and you really want to have a face-to-face with this officer to find out, like, I don't know, where where were their, where was their head when all this was going on? What made them do certain things? You can ask for an arbitration hearing um, with that particular officer. Now, I, I can't necessarily remember if, if the, uh, um, uh, the officer um, has to do it, but it's highly suggested, right? Because it's good for the officer to sit down and hear what you know what the civilian, uh, what the citizen has, you know, to say about the issue they have with the officer. Quick question. Uh, which which goes into a lot of the questions that that are getting asked here. Yeah. Well, a question on that, and then I'm gonna go to you. So the question on that is, where who do they call? Do they call the precinct? Do they call who do they call? No, that's through the civilian uh, citizens, not the civilian. I'm sorry, it's the citizens review board. They usually come here. I'm the sorry. citizens I'm CRB. Um, it, it's on the, uh, the city government website, CRB. Um, that's what it's called, Citizens Review Board, and you can contact them directly. And if you have an issue with an officer or whatnot, they they'll get it set up. All right. If if they if everybody is in agreement that hey, instead of it going to this long drawn out complaint, I want to find out why the officer did what he did, why the officer said what he said. Why did he treat me like this? Or felt like he needed to do certain things. Sit down right there in front of him, and y'all can have that conversation. And a lot of times, it's helpful for both. Like we're doing right now. Right? Right? And maybe the officer didn't think, damn, I didn't think that, you know, was a big deal at the time. All right? And maybe the citizens go, you know what? I did kind of raise up a little bit or uh, kind of jump the gun. So... It, it can work both ways. All right, we're going to the next Speak one thing that, that uh, Curry said that I didn't want to breeze past. Uh, you said that you can call uh, 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 great stuff now. Oh, man. You can call uh, um, a supervisor, right? Yeah. That's if you're on the stop. So if I get stopped, right, which I got stopped a lot. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, stop, yeah. right, and then if somebody is being belligerent, the office is being aggressive, but I don't feel comfortable. I have the right to call to ask them, and they have a supervisor come on the scene, right? Yes. I also had a right to myself call 911 and say, hey, I pulled over right now. I don't feel safe. This officer has me pulled over, but I don't feel safe. Now, depending on what you're doing, you probably don't want too many police out there. But <laughs> it's just like me where you just get pulled over and get pulled over. 
and you don't feel safe, then you can call 911, and that's, that's permissible as well. Right? Yep. Yes. And you yes. got to get out the car, too, though. If they say get out the car, you don't feel comfortable. It, oh, depends. it depends on what's the circumstances in the stop. But, but here's the thing. So everybody think, okay, if I come up and I ask you for your driver's license, and you, well, I want a supervisor. Okay, that's fine. Well, I ain't giving you my driver's license until a supervisor comes. That's the wrong way. Like that. That's the wrong way. You still no, go I'm, ahead. I'm giving it but up. But I'm saying, <laughs> no, no. But what I'm saying is, if you look at a lot of videos, yeah. uh, when, when people are asking for uh, a supervisor, now I can't speak for other jurisdictions, other states. I can't speak for their policies and, and whatnot. But right. here, let's talk about common sense. Though. Yeah, let's do common sense. Well, rules that common sense, the man. Board. You can ask for a supervisor. You can call nine one one. You can do all that. Let me see your driver's license. And, and your, your insurance registration, okay, here. All right, because... That's the privilege of... But, the then, but then after you give that, can you say, I, I don't want to get out the car until you bring the supervisor? Well, it depends on... Give you a, it, it depends on what, what that reason is. All right, what, what, what's the nature of the stop? Why did he pull you over? All right, it, 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 there are a lot of factors um, so that go a regular, into that. regular uh, stop, like you ran a, you made a, went through a yellow light too, too slow, uh, and the light was red. Now, now I get. Well, I'm saying, it's it's something that that they basically. Yeah. Then yeah. That, John's Creek. They said you were driving through the light too slow. I was like, man, something wrong with my transmission, man. My, my engine. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> they thought you were drunk. Maybe they thought you were drunk or something. Yeah, maybe get out. He maybe get out the car. See, he gonna stumble around. Got, did you get out the car? Yeah, I got out. And then what happened? The so supervisor got there and he said you ain't had to get him out the car. That's the point. But I got I'm gonna get out of the car when you get belligerent and you get to acting acting like a super cop. I'm gonna be like, all right, what's what, what, what what that that's the point mm -hmm. that we just were trying to make. Yeah. We all have to use common sense. Yeah. Right? And these conversations are great because it, I, I just quick cut it to getting a job. Some people don't know how to dress for an interview. Right. Yeah. Some folks might you might be going to an interview to be a paralegal and you got on a jersey that's not gonna work. Right? Yeah. So the same thing when you get pulled over, just had the basic common courtesy to, to the, the cop of twelve, whoever pulled you over, had a basic common courtesy. Show them your license, show them this, show them that. And then if they're still a little out of hand, then you use that second line of defense that you have, which you know I can call 911, I can call ask him to get a supervisor. I usually call him and be like, hey, you know what? You can also record. Okay. You can also record the stop. But once again, it go back to common courtesy. How would you feel if somebody I'm recording you? Yeah. I'm recording you. Doing that. Right. No. Cut your phone while when the lights hit you, cut the phone on and lay the phone on the dashboard. And lay it down and let it do what it does. It's the same thing. Most of us got body cameras now. And the body camera tell uh, all the stories. Like you said, some of the clips you see on social media, when they give you the snippet, it do look bad. And you're like, oh, dang, he dirty. Oh, the girl in the park. We talked about it the last one. And then when you see the full video, then it's like, oh, well, they ain't show us that. But have you seen a video that kind of made you feel like, dang, it was wrong? George Floyd. The moment I said George Floyd, I knew it was wrong. Some people don't think it's wrong. At the end of the day, as a, I, I was a police officer for 16 and a half years. Most of us know how to do this job. You know what I'm saying? It's not rocket science. Treat people how you want to be treated, right? Now, has it been times you had to put your hands on people? Of course. But at what level do you let up and say, all right, it's over. It ain't no, once I got you, oh, yeah, we were fighting early, and I said, no, nah, that's being extra. And now in this day and age, you don't never know who recorded. You don't never know where they're around. Yeah. And that can come back. People are, cops are now going to jail for doing the stuff like that. The world has changed. The days of just doing whatever you want, the days is over. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about y'all, but I ain't trying to go to jail for nobody. Hmm. We're gonna move on to the next, the next one because basically we already brought it up. You can snitch on the police, right? So now we're gonna talk about snitching. <laughs> 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 so, um, when it, one, 
another question that came up online, and it's a little, it's a little broad. It's about telling on people, right? And what is snitching is, and my definition of snitching is, I'm trying to get out of something that I should be in. Like, if I commit a crime, and I'm about to go to jail, and I'm going to tell on somebody else, at least they my sentence. To me, that's the only snitching. If I'm paying taxes and not doing no crime, somebody breaking my house, I'm telling you. Like, I feel like that's my right, right? If I'm not doing anything wrong. Anybody feels different who want to speak up, want to talk about that? Don't know why I want to steal. Don't know why I want to talk about that. Point to the No, no, I, I, I think what you got to do is look at how it's being presented. See, that's the thing. It's how it's being presented. If I know I'm in a car with somebody else and I ain't did nothing, they just went in there and they robbed the bank and I didn't, I didn't get out. You know, at some point, you're going to have to, you got to say, am I going to survive this? First off, then once the situation, the police get behind, and I said, I had a situation where it was two guys, it was three guys in the car. The guy in the back seat did not run. He stayed in that car, he didn't go nowhere. We actually left, chased the guy that came back to the car. He was still sitting in the car. He was high. He was drunk. He, he was high, okay? But he never left. So when we were sitting there, we was like, dude, he's like, man, I don't know what the hell they was doing, but it wasn't on me. And so I'm sitting there, I'm like, dang, okay, I'm just going to make him a good witness. That's all the thing I can do at this point is make him a good witness and say, hey, what were you doing? Yeah, so, well, I'm just saying, he didn't run. So if you write the report up, what did he do? What did that other subject do inside the car? He didn't do nothing. He just stayed in the car, even though he was... And they would, actually what they did, they was, they, was, they was speeding, and then they stopped, and they bailed out. Them two bailed out, okay? But well, one didn't have a driver's license, the other had a warrant, so that was a whole different story. But he was in the back, so could I charge him? No. But does it happen? Yes. yes, it does happen. They just say, I'm going to lump all of y'all into this group, and he ain't had nothing to do with it. Well, it was a recent story like that. It was a house party. It was 70 people, 72 people in the house. Police came for a noise disturbance. They, they found some weed in the house, and they said, well, who's weed in it? Nobody spoke up, so it's okay. We're locking everybody in. So at this point, right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's over. That's over, Zealous. Yeah, what at the same time? Yeah, you couldn't got past you could got past the complaint room on that. They be like, oh no, oh they ain't gonna work. I that up, would you? I think in the line of this question when we're talking about snitching that it, it really has nothing to do with anybody that's obeying the law. It's got something to do with people that aren't. So you're trying to alleviate your punishment. It's like I got a little cousin and he do something bad and like, we both finna get a whooping. I'm like, hey bro, you ain't gonna eat that. Like, come on now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you gonna you gonna well he gonna be like, nah, he did it. So he so I get a whooping, then that's snitching. Well, like we talked about earlier today with the young people. Our goal is to keep them from even having to make those decisions. Eliminate yourself from being associated with people that are doing stuff. If you know somebody finna go to rob a liquor store, hey, let me out the car. Ain't no nothing wrong with being trade from boys in the hood. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, if, because once you stay in that car, you basically become a part of that that case. If when it goes bad or if it they go to jail, you become a part of it. And it's a lot of guys that don't want the peer pressure of, are oh, you lame, you soft, and it's going to stay in the car. And then once everybody gets jammed up, that might be the man that holds solid better than the people that actually did the crime. There's a lot of tough dudes doing life right now in the brain, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to make a, a smart decision when it comes to those things like that. And obviously, right now, we're talking more to the people watching on social media than anything else. Like, it don't make sense to be tough and dead or tough doing life. Well, it's all fun and games until something happens to them or their family. Right. Then they want the police and everybody to be involved when 
Exactly. You could have been involved to help the community or your folk a long time ago, but you, you chose not to do it. Trying to hold on to the street cred. That's all they're doing. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next question. We were talking about the incident that happened in the Lansing Station. A lot of people are bringing that up. What are some ways that you think we can kind of alleviate some of those some of those situations? I know Pete was like boots on the ground when he came to that when that child uh, was unfortunately murdered. Um, but I know he was he was like down and very vocal about what was going on. He's some of the kids he's been helping through his program. So maybe if anybody. Has Resources they can share for these kids. I think a lot of times they just don't have anything to do with They just outside. Yeah. Yes. This is more. Greetings. 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 I hope everyone is having a good night so far. So I'm Captain April Moore. I work for the Fulton County Sheriff's Office. And I serve as the captain for our community engagement unit. So things like this, dealing with kids on a weekly basis, I probably get about, I'm going to say 15 to 20 calls from parents, from children as young as seven or eight up to high school, where they're like, I need you to come get my child, because they are having problems at school. Just two days ago, I got a, a call from a teacher we're to the point where the mother is having to come up to school so much that she's about to lose her job because her child is having problems. And so you look at some of the programs that you have at juvenile court, but of course those are normally geared towards like if you're truant, runaway, things of that nature. So there are a lot of programs, Atlanta um, Police Foundation, Atlanta Police Department, they have a COPS unit. We also have programming, but looking at a lot of our young kids that are in jail and the programming that we have for inmates, because sometimes it's not going to school, having learning disabilities, and because you have a learning disability and it hasn't been diagnosed, now you're acting out in class, and those things aren't being addressed. Part of that goes to parenting as well, um, because I have a lot of friends that are educators, and sometimes parents are egging their children on into some of these things that they're doing. Um, I think mentorship is a lot to do with it, especially a lot of our young black boys not having strong male positive leadership. Real and mentorship. Real mentorship, because and, and it's funny that you mention that, um, because being a mentor is more than just telling a child, like, you, you need to call me if you need something, yeah. Yeah. right? Because they're not going to do that. They don't know what that looks like sometimes. And a lot of times people get into a situation where some adults really are not well-meaning, and then they exploit them. Just Ooh. last night, we had a panel about human sex trafficking, and they're sex trafficking boys, too. And when you look at this and what's going on and the glamorized, you know, with social media and all these things that are in the rap culture, all these things, what are we as a community doing? Law enforcement, of course, we see this on a regular basis, try to build those relationships where we can, but it's really a community effort. It can't just be law enforcement, it can't just be the community, because we're seeing these things on a regular basis. So I would encourage anyone that is either an educator or knows a kid, take them under your wing or reach out to your local police department or reach out to the school. Hey, you all have a mentoring program for kids. It's something as simple as learning how to tie a tie. It's a lot of boys that don't even know how to do that, never had a suit before. You know, what can you do to pull resources just to provide them with something that they've never had before and know, know what it looks like and know what it feels like to be proud and walk into something and have something. My youngest son, he had a program. It was like a like a rites of passage program, and he was excited about it. A lot of kids don't have anything to say, hey, I got a certificate. I'm a part of something right. bigger than this. And the reason why they get into these cultures is because someone's paying attention to them, right? You have parents that are going to work all the time, and you become a latchkey kid. Back in the day, kids would go outside, you know, play up under the lights. They were still getting the stuff, but you had things to do. Now you have this culture <laughs> that will take them and be like, hey, I'll talk to you, I'll take you in my wing, I can help you make some money, I can help you do these things, but it's not anything to the good. So it's really a community effort, and, and not just community on its own. You really have to bridge the gap with law enforcement because we're seeing this on a day-to-day -day basis. And especially for those of us that are black and working in law enforcement, um, I always say, you know, it's almost like being a translator, right? Because, I mean, I grew up in Decatur. I went to the Southwest Cab High School, right? The. That the. the. Right? <laughs> and so I get it when you, you 
interact with people, the way that I interact with someone, because I grew up in this stuff, is different the way that I talk to someone. So I could walk in and be like, come on now, for real. It's like, we doing this today? Like, nah. I, 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 gotta, I get off at 5 o'clock. I'm not trying to do this with you today. Like, right? And a lot of times it's like breaking that ice instead of coming up like, oh, I'm the police, you need to tell me, whatever. People, they want to be talked to in their language. So sometimes you have to be a translator in that space and really trying to be culturally sensitive about that and recognizing that every black man that's talking about it ain't mad, right? And really learning about those things. So especially for our youth, I think it's programming. And we talk about these things, but where's the execution, right? Like, what do you do when you leave here and go home? Like, are, are you talking to your kids? Are you on social media yourself all the time? Are you talking to your <laughs> teachers and seeing what they're, what your kid is doing in school? Who are they, who they are um, hanging out with? Because sex trafficking, it's a lot of sex trafficking victims that go to school and come home every day and are recruiting other people to do it. So what are these kids doing and getting into and how much do you really know? So just always encouraging people to uh, engage, reach out to your local police department, and I'm always available if anybody needs me. And of course, you know, Tyrone is doing his thing to a lot of other folks in the room. Hey, so I, for everybody that's online, what, and, and everyone here, so. Oh, no. Oh, no. So. <laughs> I'll well, tell you, bro, we're the worst, bro. We're the worst. <laughs> anyway, we, we have a. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. We've got a list of, uh, of different programs that the city does offer. Um, I'll just highlight uh, a few of them, but we'll make sure that uh, we put them on our website. It's a sign up sheet with email addresses going around. Yeah, around. All right. So you have, you have a program to. Yeah. I mean, no, you know, what we discovered is a lot of people don't know about all the different programs that are out there. They only know about the one, one or two. And then by, since we've been doing these events, we've learned of other programs, other nonprofits. And the whole goal is community means everybody. It doesn't just mean the police. I think the police should be the last resort, really. Cor well, the police can be a, a part of it because as a police officer, you are in and, in, in and around the community, too. And you can help provide information to help people and direct them to the different programs mm -hmm. that may be able to assist your kid better than the law enforcement or the interaction that they're having with law enforcement. Right. So just a couple, um, Parks and Recreation has a uh, different uh, youth program for all type of uh, athletics ages 5 through 17. Um, they have youth basketball. Uh, just strictly basketball, ages 5 through 17. Uh, WorkSource Atlanta uh, to help these kids find a job 14 to 21 while they're still in school, and then 16 um, to 24 if they're out of school. All right, so that's just a, 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 a few of them. There, there are some more. We'll put them on the website. Um, if you're interested, uh, if you want to get, you know, your kid, or other family members, or just kids in the neighborhood, man. Go on the site, um, take the kids down there, try to get them involved. Um, these are, they, they've been some great programs. Uh, the police department has um, what they call the At Promise Center, all right? A number of those um, centers throughout the city where they teach um, technical skills, life skills. Um, just put them in therapy, just put them, they're putting these kids in a positive environment, getting them off the street, where they they think they're getting this positive uh, input, you know, from from the folks in their own neighborhood. Put them in a different environment and kind of trying to pour into these kids to help them make a, a, a change. So we're gonna put them on a website. If you're interested, go look, and uh, if something fits, go for it. Most kids, if they see when they see different, they see better, they do better. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is, we can't just, the problem that happens is a lot of people say it's not my problem or they just push the blame on what the teacher should do better or, the, or the, the police should do better. No. Try to, everybody, if everybody do their part, then it's teamwork make it all work. You know what I'm saying? And it takes little parts. Like if you got little cousins, little people, little guys on your street, don't just push them to the side. Sit down and have a conversation with them. One thing I learned, ask somebody, remember in kindergarten, they asked, what you want to be when you grow up? And then a lot of young people be like, I don't know. 
Or they say the same thing. I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a rapper. I want to go to the NBA. All right, that's cool, but what if that don't work? What else are you planning on? What's your one-year goal? What's your five-year goal? What's your ten-year goal? And once you start helping guide them and mold them, then they'll listen to what else you have because now you you winding them up to think, like, dang, maybe I could do this. Or maybe I could do that. I didn't wake up and say I wanted to be a cop. I didn't strive to be a cop. You know what I'm saying? It just happened. Somebody sat me down and talked to me, and they said, what do you want to do for the next 30 or 40 years? And I was like, dang, I might be police. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> so what we're going to do is give it to them and talk about your program that you have as well, because we want to we wanna start letting people know of the different programs that we have in the community that they can have besides the PD. Okay, go ahead. Well, my program is called The Father and Me. We focus on kids from 5 to 25, boys and girls. We teach them everything from how to drive to how to cook. We 24 hours. That's why it's like, these things are great. What are we going to do when we leave? What are we going to do when we leave? Because how many men here right now have been to our kids? We got to be real. How many? That's great. That's great. Every man should be raising their hand here. Every woman needs to raise their hand. See, we can talk all day. My program, we very, very hands-on with these kids. That's why when you said South Atlanta, we trying to get in there. That's what we're going to South the Cap. Me and my brother keep going to South the Cap. We definitely want to try to go out there with us. I don't so, live here. I fly in to do this. You say St. Louis, right? Yeah. I took my program to St. Louis. Let's go. And what I tell you, <laughs> the number one thing is these young men never seen a man before. So our whole thing is we got to let them understand what a man is. And the woman, because I put them in the structure. I got a strict contract that you got to sign the parents and the kids. When I get them in my program, they cool. They go back home, it's a whole nother dynamic. So like I say, what are we doing? I'm doing my part. I'm doing everything I can. You feel what I'm saying? They make me get a non-profit. I was there doing it because it's my passion. So we teach them tech. We teach them uh, finances. We even working on the grant program. So anybody know how to write grants? Holler at us. We even created a youth task force with my brother Keith right there. Keith, you want to talk about my father first? Come on, come on over here. So we very, very, very hands on. I just met the young man over here, 18 years old. He about to be in the program. You feel what I'm saying? Our whole thing is they don't need to be in jail. They need to be in these real programs with real men and understand what real women is. Because a lot of these young men are named after their dad and never seen their dad. And so it's a whole other dynamic. So a lot of times when they last night, it's not them. It's real trouble that they're going through. Right. They're like 12 year old boys I am. You feel what I'm saying? His mama kept on saying she was crying, crying, crying for help. Man, Keith, like, he was crying for help, but you wait until he's 12 years old. He started stealing and doing everything at 10. Right. And then she said when she reached out to the police, she nobody put in the right direction. So then you got these other young boys that's with them, straight trauma. So when I pull up and pick them up, they don't know how, how, how to deal with a man because there's no male structure going on. So the kids are really running the house. So what we do, I allow them to go to the house 10 o'clock at night because we got to be hands-on with these kids. A lot of times, it's just talk, 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 talk. So with the father and me, we very, very active, very hands-on with And I'm glad my brother Keith, we partnered up and we active in the streets every day dealing with these kids because we can talk all day. But how many of us know how to go out there and really connect with the kids? That's what I'm saying by connecting with the kids to get them to be the police. We let them know the police is cool. Because when I get them, I let them listen to their music, and then I ask them why they listen to the music. So a lot of times we don't listen to the kids when they talk. We too busy being a parent and being an adult, we're not listening to the kids. So that's why when we, we got to ride by seven different gas stations, seven stores when the young boys are outside. Instead of going to the store and interacting with the young boys. So our whole thing is we're creating a workshop for the men and the women. So whatever y'all got going on, y'all holler and let us know. Y'all can uh, add me on Instagram at the father and me. And anything y'all need to know, y'all send me a DM. Appreciate it. Good sure. work. Uh, my name is Keith Lewis, and the name of my program is I'm a Father First. You know, I've been around since about 2017. Before I started I'm a Father First, I had Jump Right Association. You know, I'm an ex-offender. I've been shot twice myself. So I come from the city, you know, the real trauma that happens in this city. And I went to Mays, I was in the academy, I was all that good stuff. But I was trying to figure my way out, like you said, and I can't say I had anybody sit me down and say what I'm gonna be doing 30, 40 years later. But my father was in my life, and he was an educator. He retired after 20 plus years teaching. 
So it doesn't matter what the demographics or the shape of the household looks like. You know, kids are going to find their way into whatever their brain tell them is what is, is appealing. So I guess um, in a nutshell, we've done a lot of stuff. We've been in the schools, so we definitely connect with the schools. Um, back in 2020, we were funded a lot of money and we fed. We did Meals of Love. We fed about 250,000 meals, and it was all through APS students. My goal at the time was to feed the kids that we serviced. But once the pandemic came back, it still became hard to engage in the schools. So I would definitely say we got to give a little grace because people in those corporate government spaces, they had to go through different protocols than people who just like, I want to help, I want to help, you know, because I didn't even wear a mask during the pandemic. And glory be to God, I didn't catch any type of, you know, COVID or whatever. But each space, it, it requires something different. Mm -hmm. So from programming, we've done meals. In the school, we've done um, King Talk. King Talk was very effective. That was at Best Academy on the west side. So we would take like 15 boys and we would talk to them for like an hour. Like this conversation has been very effective. You know, it's my first time coming to So thank you for always letting me know when you come into town because his commitment is, is incredible. So just back to programming, we've done Meals of Love, we've done that, and we did rebrand the man last year. We had like a hundred, you know, Reese, everybody was there. We had like 150 black men at the Capitol. It was cool, but what happens after that? You know what I mean? Like everybody's in their own little silos trying to be super mentor. So for me, I took a lot of time to myself, guys. I had to bag back and say, okay, you know, um, what is most important here? And it's the children. You know, when we speak about Zion and um, Cameron, they lost their lives at 12 and 15. And Cameron's mother, um, I don't know if y'all can put it on the thing, she has a program called forevercameron.org. We've been on calls every Wednesday with her. Um, I knew Cameron before he was even born. I tapped in to help, like like Seymour said, we was just helping. But then when I Googled the 15-year-old boy that died, and saw it with somebody that I knew before he was even born. It's a different thing, guys, when you're mentoring just this stranger that you just meet and you just touch and go. It's a whole different thing when it's someone that you've seen from being, in a, you know, as a baby growing up. So mental health is something that's been very, very important to me and working with the young kids. They're involved in a lot of drugs and games. So I think we just got to take that more serious because really, like, Cameron, his mother didn't even know how serious he was involved in them games. And all the kids knew from social media. So we now have this task force, and anybody that wants to join, I would appreciate it. We have about 50 people that's tapped in, but now it takes consistency. You know what I'm saying? So I thank you for you know tapping in with me. We got to really just be consistent, guys, because it's something that goes on every day of the week. So. Me and Seymour just been pulling up everywhere just so we can show people that it's not about us individually. It's about us taking our city back. So that's pretty much a rundown. We appreciate, we appreciate can, both of you. Yeah. Quick question. Like, are either of you, both of you, connected to the city's Office of Violence Reduction? Well, I, I was with Jack Will, but then she left. She's at Grady now. So right. whoever is over and you know. And I also know the city of Atlanta, one time for Mayor Dickens, he actually did put some things together and made sure that it's a resource on their website too. It has all the nonprofits listed. There's some other great organizations too. Like I grew up in the Keith all the time. I see you in the streets too. Obviously, we got a, a nonprofit, Positive American Youth, and we've done stuff together. I see some other guys like Keith Strickland with uh, making the transition. I see Scotty doing some stuff. Uh, he was in Atlanta too doing some, some great things and being very, really vocal about making change. So if anybody has a resource, make sure you tap into our social media, Clippers and Cops, and leave, leave a comment so people can see because that's what it's for. Like, we all a community, right? Mm -hmm. It ain't just the police and the radio person, once again, not the police. Okay. <laughs> uh, in here. So we just want to make sure that it's all about community. So if you guys have a resource, you might know a resource. You might see something at a school that your kid goes to. Drop it on there and, and, and start to build these conversations and let's build a web of help. But support these programs in other ways. Oh, it ain't all sorry. about just talking about it. Support these programs. Like, I was just telling somebody, I done made 12 trips to Atlanta in the course of the year to keep this program going. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't easy, but I believe in what we're doing. And like I was saying, he about to bring me to tears. 
that's real. To see your work in action mm -hmm. and see that it's affecting somebody, to see that you're able to change somebody's life, that's price. You can't put a price tag on it. A lot of people talk about it. We do it. We've been doing it. We've been doing it since we started with no support out of our own pocket. You know what I'm saying? And that's because we care about Atlanta. We care about kids. We care. As a gang detective, everybody that came across my desk looked like me. Mm -hmm. All right? And then by the time they came across the desk, it was too late. It's, I got to do my job. I'm trying to get you before you get to there. I'm trying to show you it's another way to get paper. It's another way to live your life. It's another way off. The different topics we talked about, snitching and all that, I don't even want you involved in all that. You have to make a penitentiary decision with your life. 25 years to tell on your friends. Like, don't get involved in it. If they see better, they do better, they want better. It takes stand-up people. Most people in here are successful. Mm -hmm. Grab somebody and show them how you became successful. You didn't just wake up like this and become that way. Somebody molded you. I don't know if it was your mom or dad or whoever. Some of these kids ain't got that. So... We got to step up to be able to make ourselves available to try to help teach them. Mike. Um, that's the perfect segue. Actually, I want to respond to Captain Moore's awesome comment. She said, um, um, cultural relativity, she said, translation, we were talking about that. And um, you mentioned um, you know, the sacrifices that are involved. And the social components of it, um, I just want to provoke some thought processes when he said, when you get to his desk, um, he has to do his job as a police officer, and that's something that the community has to work on because he should have, or we should have policies in place where when they get to his desk, we can offer them something else, or we can offer them to alternatives because we know how the system works and how quick to, quick to throw time at these young men. So as, um, thank you for, I don't know what you do, but I think that I heard what you said, and I'm grateful for that because I'm a mother first. And we have to take the social components and the dynamics into consideration. Um, I'm reading a book called Jim Crow's Pink Slip, and it's talking about education. Education is not the same as it used to be when we were younger. And what's happening is the school system is not as available to have these resources that these kids have. So the one thing he kept saying, when you leave here, when you leave here, do something, it is so critical that every single person do every single thing that they can because there are some mothers that I deal with, I'm a community educational advocate, and I also work with you know, the city or whoever I have to work with. But the most important thing that I identify is the lack of resources that these kids actually have. In zone three right now, if you want to count the recreational centers, you want to count the after school programs, if you want to count how many resources for mothers, if they have two or four, four or five kids and they need to work, what resources do they help them with their kids? Yes, it's their responsibility. Yes, we understand that. But I'm 42 and I, I went to Doug. I didn't go to Mays. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I went to Doug, Douglas. And we have rec, we have rec centers everywhere. There were 500,000 programs you could go to. Accessibility. Parents didn't have cars. My mom didn't need to have a car. I could get there. We had um, the Boys and Girls Club. They were on every block, every corner. We're Police free. Athletic League. Yeah. Right there over there on the west side by West Lake Avenue. Um, they were everywhere. And they came to the school. They pick your kids up. So we need to advocate for these resources because these parents are out here by themselves. And like this young man said. Huh? Well, and, you, and see, you know what? You, you hit it. No arguments here. So that's why I said when you leave here, I watch city council meetings all day. Look at this funding. So when you talk about these things, I just want, I petition everyone to pay attention if you live in the city, and you're not, you're not from here, but if you live in the city, um, look at the city council meetings and listen to that budget for the public safety meeting. They hold them. Listen to those comments. Um, my name is Kimberly Brooks underscore KB. So people, and I as nerdy as I am, y'all probably have a life, but I look at them and I cut snippets off. And I will leave this conversation with excellent officers are out here, but all of them aren't. But it's the systems that enable that system. And today, this gentleman that reported about Fulton County's office staying open reported 1,065 unindicted individuals in Fulton County. If you know what unindicted means, that means not formally charged. They have no way to start seeking an attorney. They have no way to start advocating for themselves. And they're poor and black. Who cares? But what happens is you tear communities apart because I'm a mother of a son that was in prison for five years. 
So when my son's not home for Christmas, Thanksgiving, and all of those days, that's 1,000 families that are torn apart. So um, I just petition you guys to not, when you leave here, whatever county that you're in, um, your public safety, your council meetings are where your structure is going to change because these officers need the tools and the resources that they need to do their jobs. And some of these good guys out here, because I have friends that are officers, it seems like the good guys are always in trouble, you know, for not shooting somebody and not, well, I won't say the details of that because then they tell who he is, for not shooting this young man and having to go to the hospital, they gave him a desk job because he chose to fight him, but he got injured. So I support officers to the fullest, but I also support a structured system that doesn't target my black men and my black boys. Because right. I'm going to fight for them every day of the week because I'm a black woman. Right. So there's that. On that level, what you're talking about, too, uh, some of the resources to kids that are dealing with things like that, like the undocumented, those that are getting unfair prison time. There's other programs out there, too, like Gary Davis. I'm not sure if y'all familiar with him with Next Level yeah, Boys Academy. Yeah. He does some stupid, yeah, some dope yeah. stuff. As far as I know, I'm just going off. I've been over there. I've seen, I've been over. I seen him get some, like, a hundred, like lots of years taken off of a lot of kids mm -hmm. and cases and stuff like that, too. So check it out. You might have your own opinion on it. I took some of my boys over there and take it out. Right. So check that out. I think the part of the problem is they create funding to feed the children, but they don't create funding to show them how to feed themselves. Right. Yeah. So every man so needs to know how to fish on his own. Right. So whenever you teach a young man how to fish, he can feed himself. They ain't doing that. They want you to feed them, but then they want you to send them back out there broke. So right. now they're breaking into somebody's house. Now they got a pistol to your head, and they talking about, give me, give me all your money in your purse. So I just feel like the, the, the way they create the system is uh, they want you to go to jail. They want you to get, you know, incarcerated so they can make that money. We ain't gonna argue that fact because I'll be thinking the same yeah. on a lot yeah. of stuff. Right. But I also do see some of the programs that are available, like the work program is I think they push them for kids 16 to 24 to get jobs, also kids 14 to 21 to get jobs in the city. When, how long has that been existing though? <clears throat> I don't know, but we can only go off this this here now. And also with yeah. like business for places like this, right? There are there are programs where you can hire kids and the city will pay for it. I don't know. You got flyers or anything for that? So I, can I got Google. The that's the same thing I do, bro. I'm just telling you. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying to you. The same way you is about that, that's the same way. They're not going to take it serious. You just say, I got Google. Right. Like, they're going to be like, oh, okay. No, they're no, not going to respect that deal. No, no, what I'm saying as a business owner. Not I'm a business owner. owner. I own a restaurant right there. That's, what I'm, I'm That's what I'm saying. As a business so owner. I, I want the information so I right. can give it to the kids. Right. I wish that they That's promoted it like they, like they, like they, like I think they should. But since they don't, I'm telling you no. But, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me. Watch this. Watch this. How about we research it on Google and post it on our page, right. and then we start. We have these resources available and explaining where it is. And how to get to it. Because, what you, like I said earlier, what we find out is there are resources out there, but everybody don't have access to the information. Yeah, well, everybody ain't got access to it. No, I'm talking about the kids. But, but, with some of the kids, some of these kids, if it's in a book, they're not going to open it. If it's not right there, readily available, they're not going to look at it. So it's almost like got to walk them to the information. What we don't want to do is complain about the things that we know we'll handle control. The only thing I do is the stuff I can control, I can control, right? So like, I didn't know, you didn't know the information before I said it, right? I never heard of it. Now you know. Now you can figure something out, right? And you can put something up and post it and tell everybody you know. And then they know. And then more people know. So that's the stuff we got to control. Like so, so what you're saying, it's going to help out the y'all. We're not arguing. No, we're not arguing. Don't let me just be loud and
everybody watching on camera out there right now. We talk. That is a conversation. You know what I mean? I know what he meant. We agree to it. Well, I, I really know that. You right. have to tell me. No, I don't want nobody. Oh, my bad. I know they good. They good. Yeah, they they just my men. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but no, so, so what you were saying and what you were saying, so um, when Kanye West came to um, Atlanta, um, so a friend of mine mm -hmm. in California contacted me and said, hey, he wanted to pull the dome up for black boys because I deal with a lot of the boys like literally on the street. Like I'm always stopping the water boys going, stopping them from the nonsense. He told me that um, his, his, um, his PR told me that I could have as many tickets as I needed to get every black boy that I could find a ticket to be in the dome for his dunder, um, for the um, for, for him coming here. Let me tell you something. I sold out for 500 tickets, and I started my journey, letting my friends know, hey, we're going to get all of these boys tickets. I came to realize that all of them are flexing. They do not have internet. They do not have Wi-Fi. They don't have a telephone service. So I wanted to give them a free service but you know, you gotta get the ticket on your phone. I had to sign in the tickets digitally. So I ended up meeting random people. These kids don't have the stuff that we think they have. And it was an eye opener for me because here I am thinking I'm gonna give, you know, have the dome full of these young boys and everything so they can represent our city, but they ain't even got internet. They don't have the, and it was it was shameful for because I, I'm on social media, so you got all of this money and everything else and all of this stuff. These kids are suffering in silence, but their social media requires that you be perfect. Mm -hmm. So they're not even fighting with like only drugs and I mean and gangbangers. They're fighting with looking at their friends, not having to you know even look like they have money. So I just wanted to share that because you were talking about resources. They couldn't. They couldn't even get. I, they didn't have Wi-Fi and cell phones. And I ain't gonna say it was the whole city of Atlanta, but just about. Out of, yeah, out of about 350 of them, I only had 168 tickets that I gave. And at one point, I was like calling my friends up and letting the girl know, I'm just going to give these tickets to somebody so another can represent in the dome. But out of 500 and some tickets, I only gave, what well, she would have gave me as soon as I wanted. I was going to give her 168. Mm -hmm. That goes to point two, another resource too, that if you run into this situation again, I know that was last minute and it may not help anybody, but it may help a lot of people right now. Mm -hmm. There's another act going on with at and T-Mobile and a couple other wireless services where they give out free phones as well as internet hotspots to any kid that, that uh, uh, qualifies for free or reduced lunch. Any kid. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if they can get free reduced lunch, you can go get the Wi-Fi and the phone so at least you have a safety phone. I don't know how many any time minutes on it, but you get free phone, you get free Wi-Fi. Hmm? Yes, sir. Have you ever thought about, like, like this is what you were saying, like, meeting where the kids are with technology, like, maybe mm -hmm. higher position of working with the schools to create an app? Yeah, so, like, so to answer your question, yes, we do the Clippers and Cops campus invasions. We are looking for other sponsors to come along with us when we do it to be able to provide those resources when we do it. It's still wrong, but we're not gonna stop doing the movement mm -hmm. to wait on the sponsor. No, so no, you know, so I, know I know what you're saying. But you're saying showing them the showing information, them information and the technology yeah, that's out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. If they ask, I got a QR code, you can come here. We got right. QR code. This is, this is where it is. Meeting people where they're at. Right. Exactly. Tell me or ask me. Most people pass the least resistance. Yes. We're not gonna do this. So to answer the question, yes, and to get it better, yes, we still going. We might have a question over. Oh, it wasn't really a question, it was more so a comment. I appreciate y'all. Um, one thing I want to do is lock in. I don't really like playing politics. And mm -hmm. I'm the youngest warehousing person in the United States. I dropped out of school in Riverdale. So, Southside Bell, you get what I'm saying? I, I'm here because this my brother, Keith, my brother. Like, I got brothers in here, but, but like, I hire people. You know what I mean? Like, I have a warehouse in Fulton County. I have a warehouse in DeKalb County. I'm 31. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I dropped out at 14. So, like, I'm an example of shit that we didn't see. Excuse my French. <laughs> but I'm an example of shit that we didn't see <laughs> growing up. And, like, they used to tell us, go get a warehouse job. You know, you're going to get good pay, good benefits. But, like, it's black people that own stuff. Like, this young brother owned a barbershop. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, talking to people, trying to get into the OJT programs and be one of those business owners to give back. No offense, but it's not doing shit for our community. You know what I'm saying? We talk about a thousand families that don't have their children because it's resources like this that aren't talked about enough. You get what I'm saying? I don't know how long y'all been doing this. 
Pretty much well, since March of 2018, we have been on every national news network in the country. Some people, but I'm saying, <laughs> it but it goes to your point. Right. Some people still don't know that we do this once a month. We've been doing this every single month right. since 2018 through the pandemic. Right. So forth and so forth. I'm about to open up the St. Louis. I just got land in Pittsburgh. So, like, we doing stuff for us. Right. You get what I'm saying? But it's so not. You, so, you hiring right now? I'm hiring so right now. Let me get your information for you. Do. I'm going on the radio tonight. I'm going to be like, he hiring right now. You got okay. a kid. And I know everybody listens to the radio. But it don't yeah. matter. Whoever here, here. So, how, what, what then, age groups now? And then there? share the information on our website so we can repost it. Right. Okay. And get traction for you. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, that, we're trying to be a vessel to be able to share all this information. Well, well what you y'all are seeing, we got people from different walks of life all in the same room. Yeah. So think about an event where that happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this is how it, this is the community. The community is made up of people from all different walks of life coming together to do what's the betterment of the community. And if anybody has a resource like this man right here has a resource, DM me tonight. Because I do this every night. I shout out whoever's hiring every night. I shout out organizations every night. I get in trouble every night for giving people free promo. Every night I get in trouble. But it's the FBI. Yeah. FBI. I'm a race So DM me tonight. The reason. R E E C S W I E Y. DM me. Let me know the information and I'll make sure I get it out tonight. For sure. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Smart. He was scared to look at it. Nah, I feel like a lot of conversations about resources and um, it's about the political process and not being a part of the political process and knowing who's doing what. Um, currently, Georgia's in a uh, legislative session where everyone is, where the funding is being talked about, where these things are. We're not in the places where we need to be held, holding people accountable. A lot of times we don't know the positions of power, we don't know the infrastructure of the system that we are so hell-bent on overturning or being uh, uh, systematic or oppressed, but we don't know how it works to manipulate it in our favor. And so until you start going to county commission meetings, until you start knowing who your city councilmen are, until you start knowing who your state representatives, representatives are in your districts, you're at a disadvantage about what's going on in your community. If you don't know who's controlling your community, I think we have a lack of education about politics. We only, we only show up when they say it's the presidential election. The president cannot do nothing about your community at all. And so I think for us to understand the organization that has to happen for political activation um, is the way that we get resources. And it's not necessarily having to be a voice, but just showing up. The numbers are the numbers. A lot of times we have, I, I study, uh, I work as a community organizer, so my, my passion is youth development. Between age groups of 18 and 29, we have the largest amount of black people that are registered to vote but don't show up because they don't know the political process. So therefore, we have a whole bunch of older people making decisions for our communities because they don't give a damn what you look like because you're not showing up. So why do I have to provide you with resources if you don't even show up when I need you to vote? But we don't want to vote because we don't want to be educated about the process. So until we get educated more about the political process of what's going on and how they allocate resources and then how we can show up at school board meetings, and so they see our presence there, it's not going to change. This is a great start. Everyone in here is at a great position, but we all have to do more. A lot of people don't know there's an expungement program going on this Saturday mm -hmm. in Fulton County to get kids um, on records expunged. There's a lot of different yeah. things going on. We have to be resources. Yeah. I, I have a social media following. I put out all the resources that I can, but we have to be more engaged in the political process beyond Joe Biden and Warnock and also because those are important positions, but when it comes to controlling resources that are allocated to your community, they are not the decision makers. And until we understand who those people are and how we hold them accountable, we're at a disadvantage. All right, I want to. What time is it? 42. All right. My young people. Go ahead, Chad. Just a thought to put out there. A few people were going to put earlier. Um, seeing things on YouTube, being able to see all the bad stuff, and then we ended up in a conversation later about how people don't have access to these things. And one, of the, one of the things I was thinking about, one of the themes here, is everybody always seems to find the bad news somehow, right? The bad videos or whatever. Even in a conversation on the way over here, I'm just we're saying. talking about some Atlanta scoop, or scoop of land, or whatever. Maybe not even Look at this bro. Look at this Look at this quality. I got you. Running an ad or whatever. Raising money, running ads. Where the bad news? 
Come on, baby. Send me some. I got some for real. <laughs> we know. No, <laughs> 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 All right, look, this we have to do. Um, I want my man. You got anything you want to say before we go, or you good? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all gonna hear him again, man. I'm telling you, I knew that little boy. I'm gonna get him the voice part. We're gonna make a kid out. <laughs> Alright, um, I'll teach you a class this weekend, bro. I'll get you in. Um, we about to take a group shot, group picture, or whatnot. So, we're gonna, which way you wanna do it, bro? Tech guy, which way you wanna do it?